Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and today's video will be our guide to Keisanta, the pride of Nazuma. Usually our guides come out right before a new champion does, to give you a head start before they even release. But in this case, we made the conscious decision to wait due to his release timing. Keisanta came out just one patch before the preseason. We figured it makes a lot more sense to wait the extra time and make the guide with Season 13 in mind rather than rush to put it out just to have an item build that's going to be outdated in just two weeks. Anyways, Keisante is looking really bad right now. If you go to any stat website and look at how he's doing, you'll see that his win rate is in the mid 40s in most elos and just barely above 50 in Masters Plus. That all may sound like a reason to just skip this guide entirely, but trust me, the stats don't tell the full story here. Keisanta is actually an insanely broken champion if you know how to play him right. The thing is, people just aren't used to seeing a tank with so much skill expression. It's not an exaggeration to say that Keisanta is up there with Riven and Fiora for being one of the hardest top laners in the game to play to their full potential. Once you understand how he really works and stop just face rolling your keyboard and wondering why you feel so useless, you'll see what I mean. And hopefully, this video will be a good starting point for that. Now before we get to the main course for today, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and guides and other content like this are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24 7 so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your Pro Guides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me it's worth every penny. Now let's get started with our in-depth look at Keisante. In case you aren't familiar with Keisante's kit, we'll start out by talking about what he does. Keisante's passive is Dauntless Instinct. Keisante's abilities mark enemies hit for 4 seconds. His basic attacks against marked targets gain 25 bonus range and consume the mark on hit, dealing bonus physical damage based on your level and the max HP of the target. When Keisante is going all out, both the attack's damage and the mark damage are increased. On top of that, the bonus damage dealt by the mark is converted to true damage. Keisante's Q is Natofo Strikes. Keisante slams his Tonfa down in the target direction, dealing physical damage to enemies hit and slowing them by 80% for half a second. If this hits at least one enemy, Keisante generates a stack for 6 seconds, stacking up to 2 times and refreshing on subsequent hits. At 2 stacks, the next cast consumes both of them to become empowered. When empowered, Keisante fires a shockwave in the target direction that does the same damage as the regular cast, but now pulls enemies hit towards him over one second and stuns them for the same duration. When going all out, Netofo Strikes' cooldown is reduced by one second up to a minimum of 1.33 seconds, but it no longer slows opponents. Something interesting to note is that it's labeled as being a static cooldown, meaning the cooldown does not get lowered with ability haste, but it can be lowered another way. The cooldown actually scales with bonus resistances. It starts out at 3.5 seconds, but can be lowered all the way to 1.75 seconds if you reach 250 combined bonus armor and magic resist. Keisanta's W is Pathmaker. Keisanta charges for up to 1 second, during which he increases Pathmaker's range, damage, and stun duration. During this time, he gains displacement, immunity, and damage reduction. This channel cannot be interrupted by crowd control. Pathmaker can be recast any time while charging up, or does so automatically after the full second channel is over. It's also recastable, even when affected by cast-inhibiting crowd controls like Silence and Polymorph. Upon recast, Keisante dashes in the target direction, though not through terrain, dealing physical damage to enemies he passes through, carrying them alongside him and stunning them. Upon entering All Out, Pathmaker's cooldown is refreshed. When going All Out, Pathmaker no longer applies its knockback and stun, but instead deals bonus physical damage and its damage reduction is increased and has twice the charge and dash speed. Keisante's E is Footwork. Keisante dashes to the target location, though again, not through terrain, and grants himself a shield for 2 seconds. 
footwork can be cast on allies to dash to them at an increased range. If the ally is a champion, you'll shield them as well upon arrival. When All Out is active, Footwork's dash speed and location range are increased and it can dash through terrain. Kaysanta's ultimate is All Out. Kaysanta roots the target enemy for half a second and gains displacement immunity over the cast time, then shatters his tonfas to knock them back, during which they are revealed and blocked to the end location. The target is dealt physical damage near the end of the displacement and is stunned for 0.25 seconds afterwards. If the target hits terrain during the displacement, they are knocked back through it and dealt the damage after they emerge. They then remain airborne for an extra half second and Kaysanta strikes them to deal additional damage, after which they are stunned for 0.25 seconds. After Kaysanta blinks, he enters All Out for 20 seconds. While All Out, Kaysanta gains a health threshold equal to 55% of his maximum health, which cannot be reduced nor exceeded by any means, but is increased by 100% bonus health gained within the duration. Additionally, his base armor and magic resistance are reduced by 65% of his bonus armor and magic resistance respectively. In return, he gains attack damage that scales off of his bonus armor and MR and Omnivamp that scales with his bonus health and empowers his abilities which can now be cast at no cost. You can recast All Out anytime after 1.5 seconds to end the effect early. Whew, okay, now that was a lot and now that we've laid out each ability, let's talk about how it all works together. Kaysanta is technically labeled a tank, but really, he plays almost entirely like a bruiser. Really, the only thing that makes him a tank is his itemization. Since his abilities scale off of HP and resistances, he literally does more damage building full tank than he would if you were to just throw lethality items on him. Besides, he would literally die to a few minion autos after ulting if you built him without tons of HP. Anyways, Kaysanta's kit has a ton of room for skill expression in it. This is a really nice thing to see for a tank. Tanks are typically thought of as the easiest class of champions to play, with super simple combos for trading and pretty easy to pull off engages. Kaysanta has a ton of mobility, which is really unusual for a tank. He can also combo in all sorts of ways. For example, he can cast Q and R in the middle of his W's dash or any of his other three abilities during his E's dash. Mastering quick combos on him can make a massive difference in your playmaking ability. Compare that to other tanks like Malphite and Maokai, whose simpler kits make them way easier to play, but also give them a much lower ceiling for how hard they can carry. Now let's take a look at how to actually play Kaysante, starting off with his early game. As I've already mentioned, Kaysanta isn't your average tank. He isn't the champion you lock in to just survive the lane and go on to engage team fights so your team can do the carrying. He's a scrappy champion that wants to force fights at all stages of the game. Kaysanta is actually a strong laner, like a really strong laner. It may sound like a stretch if you're judging by the average Kaysanta's player's performance, but when he's played well, he's possibly the best blind pick in the game. He can win almost any lane, with there being a few where you may need to accept just going even. The one matchup where you don't really win early and you get outscaled later is Vayne, but she's relatively rare to see top. However, if you're going to be picking him, you may as well ban her out. Obviously, you'll need to learn to play different matchups in all different ways, but the general idea is always the same. The vast majority of your damage in trades comes from landing Q and autoing to proc your passive. Against most foes, you can force hard all-ins using W and E's mobility to chase them down. But against someone who does super well in extended fights like Darius and Olaf, it's best to keep the trading short and bursty and use your mobility to back off if they try to chase you down. As strong as his laning phase is, Kaysanta really starts to come online in the mid and late game. With his ability to duel opponents being so high, side laning is always an option. He can very easily go toe to toe with the best duelists in the game. Yes, even champions like Fiora and Jax can be easy for you to handle if you're strong at that point in the game. His ultimate serves as a great tool for helping to deal with ganks that come your way while doing this. You can ult one of your opponents through a wall to either force them into an easily 1-1v1 or just to make a flashy escape. But split pushing isn't all Kaysanta is capable of. In fact, he's even better in teamfights. 
With so much CC and damage and the mobility to get onto priority targets, he's easily one of the most disruptive champions in the game. The biggest learning curve for playing Kaysanta in team fights is learning how to use his ultimate the right way. Big mistake I see a lot of Kaysantas making is just running in and popping it right away. That's just a really good way to get melted down and be useless. The only time you should ult early in a fight is if you're doing it to remove a high priority target from the team fight altogether. For example, if you can steal away the enemy AD carry and force them to 1v1 you, or if you need to use your ultimate to get a threat away from your own backline. But most of the time, you should be in your tankier, regular mode to soak up as much damage as you can. Then go all out once you're about half HP or so, then rely on your omnivamp and increased damage to survive and finish off your foes. Now that we've talked about how to play Kaysante, let's finish things off by talking about how to build him. For your runes, run Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Biscuit Delivery, and Approach Velocity. Against super poke-heavy foes, you can consider going Second Wind if you really need it, although it's usually not necessary. For your stat runes, run Attack Speed, Armor or Magic Resist, and Health. For your items, start with a Doran Shield, then start building towards Iceborne Gauntlet. Once that's done, grab either Plated Steel Caps or Mercury Treads, then go for Sunfire Aegis. Against ranged foes, you can go for Sunfire first for the better wave clear, since you won't be able to get in range to make use of Iceborne as much anyways. After this core is done, your next two items will generally be Gargoyle Stoneplay and Thornmail, with the order depending on how badly you need the Grievous Wounds from Thornmail to be done. Your last item slot is flexible. Some good choices are Dead Man's Plate, Turbo Chem Tank, Anathema's Chain, Force of Nature, or Warmox. Whichever one you go with is up to you based on preference and your game's needs. And that about wraps things up for our guide to Kaysante, the pride of Nozuma. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this gives you a really good starting point for learning him. Remember, if you want some more in-depth tutorials, you can always hit up our coaches over at ProGuides.com. And one last thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord. The link for that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you as part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one, but until then, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you. <laughs>